Yo, what is up chat? How's everyone doing today? What is up on this beautiful Sunday? Alright, let's see who's in this chat really quick. Who got eat it? Someone said, I think we got eat it. What's up, Joe? Is Joe in here? Yes, he is. What's up, man? What's up, Korhak? What's up, mentor, bro? What's up, Siavash? Mustard talk. What up? What's up, fabulous? Fabulous leave? Santana, what's going on? Spider say, what's good? All right. We don't have too much time because I wanted to get coffee earlier and I got stuck in traffic, so I was a little late. Um, today's guest is, I'm going to have to redo this intro anyways in a few minutes, but today's guest is Ethical Hacker. Um, he is the author of DVWA and he's also behind WPCN, so both of those. He's founded both of those. Um, we're going to bring him on here. We're going to ask him some questions, uh, get to know him a little bit more. Um, understand what WP scan is. I think a lot of people have used WP scan already. Um, we have used it on this stream a lot, and um, I personally have understood how it works. But I kind of think it's uh, it's different when you hear when you hear about a tool from the author itself, and kind of getting their perspective on how they created it, what was the reason why they created it, how to use it properly, and so on. Uh, so maybe we can do, maybe we can find a target of some sort. I'll ask Ryan uh, if he has a uh, target we can use, if we have a test target, for example, for a demo. And if not, we'll find a bug bounty program. We'll do a qu quick recon and find a WordPress instance we can hack against and see where that goes. Um, guest gets on in 15 minutes. Maybe we can um, chat a little bit, hang out while we wait for everybody to join and then we'll bring on our guest ryan aka ethical hacker on twitter uh, if you don't know him already go give him a follow on twitter uh, it should be in the topic for uh, today's stream um other than that i am dying of allergies but i want to hear how you guys are doing what's up security thank you for updating the guest command man i appreciate you Yeah, I haven't been uh, streaming much recently. Uh, I'm taking a break from streaming. I think I'm going to scale back to uh, only streaming Sundays and Saturdays for now um, for different reasons. One being I'm uh, redoing my entire... Um, I'm redoing the entire, like, Nahamsek branding focus thing that I was doing. Um working on some really cool projects, uh, working on the course to get updated and that sort of stuff. So I'm scaling back on streaming, but I'll be online uh, most of the Saturdays and every Sunday I'm going to dedicate to it. I know I took last weekend off because I wasn't feeling too good. Honestly, allergies are kicking my ass. I don't know what to do about it. I woke up and took allergy medicine this morning, but that's about it. What's up, Lucifer? What's up, Cyber Expert? What's up, Edge? How you doing? But yeah, um, gonna take some time away from streaming just because it's just hard doing those streams, especially between work. It puts, it puts too much stress when I'm at work. Um, fabulously, which one was it? Uh, DM me again. I don't know what your Instagram is. If I forgot for the if I forgot the prize, message me again because I have them sitting on my inbox and I have to give them away. Uh, message me on Instagram. I may have gone lost, unless you didn't win. Unless you didn't win. What's up, Wellpung? Hello from Brazil. I have a lot of Brazilian friends I see. What's up, Tadex01? Can anyone tell me any resources for OSI and TCP IP? Google. It's an obvious one, though. All right. I don't have any guests for next week. Who should we bring on? I want to hear some names. Uh, you guys asked for Mayo again, Rezo. Um, you guys asked for Mo Chan. I gotta reach out to him. Maybe I can bring on Franz Rosen at some point. Yasin, who else? Donut. Donut's been here plenty of times, I think. Cisco Cybersecurity. Let me teach you it to free. Oh, that was a question that somebody else asked. Um, 
I can ask Donut. That wouldn't be a problem. Security would be fun to have on here. I don't know if it'd be. Maybe I should bring on all my mods one day. I think bringing on um, all the mods at one point would be really, really cool for a special stream. Inti would be a cool one to have. Inti's always fun to hang out with. He's a. Inti's a character, man. He's a very, very funny character. Whoa, we just got raided by a party of 21. Thank you so much for the raid, uh, Sheldrake. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, the thing is, um, I've had most of these people that you guys are naming on the stream. <clears throat> it's just a matter of whether or not they are comfortable uh, with coming on the show and doing a stream. Like, showing off their tools and that kind of stuff. Because Nafi's stream was really, really cool, but I just don't know if we'd be open to coming on here and, like, showing us how he does it. Uh, I'll reach out to him again. Um, it would be cool to have Nafi on here. Do I use WSL? Yes. Um, I think there is a command for it. Yeah, there we go. Kevin who? Mitnick? Mendick? Mint dick, mint mitnick. Sorry. But I would love to have, um, I would love to have him on here. It's just a matter of whether or not they're comfortable with uh, sharing, like sharing what they know and sharing their screen. That's the hardest part because you have like other programs. Like, when you're hacking on a program, I don't want them to, like, leak the programs they've been hacking on, if that makes sense. That's what makes it really hard. And I've had a few issues with, you know, a few times where a couple of hackers... I've had to message them, be like, hey, be careful, you know, like, you're, you don't want to leak any private info and stuff like that, but... But I'll give it a try. We'll see. Oops. Uh, Santiago will not probably never be on this stream. Uh, I don't think he'll be he'll be uh, ready for this. Dave Kennedy would be good, but Dave Kennedy isn't really bug bounty related. It's a. Uh, I mean, it would it would be cool to have him on here. I have no problem. I would love to have him on here, but it's just one of those things where I don't know, like if we we'll work with. Um, I don't know if it would work with the streams format. Because I don't want people to troll. If I do an invite on Zoom, people can. everyone wants to do it, and then I don't want to get trolled, and people say stupid shit on the stream, and then I have to deal with it. I don't want to do an open invite thing. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want to... I don't want to be responsible for someone else's... Um, oh yeah, I could do that, but I like the structure. I like to know who's my guest is so I can kind of do my homework on how they hack and what they do and that sort of things. But it wouldn't be bad to have like an open thing. It would be fun to do that, I think. All right, let's see. I'm going to type some of these names down really quick before Ryan joins us. We have 10 more minutes. Let me see real quick. Uh, let's see. Elemento, thank you so much for that tier one sub. I appreciate you so much for seven months. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, the interview with Nafi was really good, uh, MSG. But it's just I got to make sure. Um, again, he's comfortable with sharing his screen. Dark who? Core hack. Invite dark. Is that a bug bounty hacker? The thing is, if you think about it, this the stream is live recon for, um. They're mostly like bug bounty hunters. Dark sec. Can you drop me their Twitter handle? I'll look it up. Yeah, I'm getting like random names I've never seen. MSG, thank you so much. I appreciate your sub. Four months. I appreciate you so much. Are we doing live recon today also? Yes, but we have a guest who's going to do it with us. Uh, let me see who that is really quick. At this point, I feel like 
Oh, I security tube. Yeah, I've met him in person. But what's the point of having him on here though? Like, what is he gonna? And it's bug bounty related. I can't just bring on. Like, this is not an infosec show. It's uh, it's a bug bounty show. So it'd have to be someone who's you know like a hacker one leaderboard kind of person and someone who knows some bug bounty insights that could help us out. You know. Bro, look into it. I would love to have friends or in here next week. That would be really, really cool, I think. And then, um, Mayo would be cool. I don't know if he would do it live. Uh, Mayo and Runner it would be cool. Inti would be really, really cool. Um, Rezo would be a cool one. That wouldn't be bad. But he's still, he's still very junior. Rezo is very, very junior. Matthias, who? Let me look who Harsh is real quick. Harsh Bortha. I have no idea who that is. Security engineer, Cobalt Copentis, or Buck Route, top 150, red teamer. I'm um, still too junior. Maybe at some point. Maybe at some point. Because it has to make sense. It has to make sense for this uh, stream. Hype train. Thank you so much, Elk. I appreciate you for tier one for five months. Thank you so much. Yeah, security would be cool. I got to figure out what the format would be with uh, security. Root X harsh. Live overflow has been on here before, but he's, he's he always is not a big fan of bug bounty hunters or bug uh, bug bounties. He came on here and um, it was a great conversation. Don't get me wrong, but he's not really a big fan of bug bounties. And I don't want to push him to do something he's not a fan of, you know? Because the thing is, like, yeah, if you think about it, live recon, what am I going to do with live overflow on here? If he doesn't do bug bounties and the approach of, like, bug hunters are different than pen testers, and I'll reach out to him again, but I know he's not a big fan of bug bounty hunters, and he's been very, very vocal about it. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just... <laughs> It's just, uh, doesn't make sense. So I have to figure something out for it. Record, what's up, dude? Um, Eric would be cool to have on here, but it's going to be challenging because he gets, I think he gets nervous being live on stream. It's not about being senior, like being in the field to be senior, but it's just put out some research, put out some like, put out some write-ups. Show me, what, like, you know, the, the way I bring on the guests is how much they contribute to the community. And is there something that I could learn from you that you haven't learned from others? Like, I have to see that. With like Franz Rosen, NT, um, Jay Haddix, all these you know, different names, there's always going to be that thing that I'm going to learn. I don't think Stoke does recon. Um, he's been on here though before. He's hosted this show before and he's interviewed me before on my own show. Um, I've had him on here plenty of times. Honestly, there's no real tips to get over the fear of starting other than just starting, to be honest. Vicky Lee would be really, really cool to have on here. I reached out to her about something else the other day. If I hear back from her, um, I'll definitely bring it up again. That'd be very, very cool, I think. I think that would be really awesome to get Vicky on here. I don't know. Stoke does a lot of different stuff. Um, his recon was, when he did the recon approach, it was pretty much the same as my uh, my approach and my, uh, my talks. But it'd be cool to have him on here again just to hang out. Yeah, Vicky is one that I have never had on the show. I need to do an interview with her. I haven't done an interview in so long, chat. It's been insane. I haven't done any interviews in a very long time. I got to... Uh, I don't even know if I could do an interview anymore. I haven't done them in so long that I don't know if I can at this point. <laughs> I haven't done them in so long. I feel rusty. Also, for people uh, using the Udemy um, command, 
if you would like to um, purchase the course, wait till tomorrow when the new code drops and you can buy it for a lot cheaper than 120. You're welcome to buy it for 120. Um, Inside of PS2 would be cool, but I don't know if she, I don't know if she'll bring anything to the table. Um, as far as recon goes, at least. Um, Joel would be very, very cool. Yeah, Joel is Joel's an awesome guy. I love Joel. He's such a good dude. Ninety-four percent, fifty uh, seconds left, and then three minutes. Uh, that's a hype train. We have forty seconds left on the hype train, and three minutes until our guest comes on. Um, the cyber mentor doesn't do bug bounties. Uh, no value in bringing him on here. I love Heath. He's a good dude. You know, lots of respect for what he does, but just because you know. They're a person in the industry. Again, question is, how would they help us with bug bounties, right? Will I be releasing another intermediate course? So the course that I have right now, it's going to become intermediate at some point. I'm just currently pushing it um, to that level. So every time I do a new release, it's going to do more and more into it. There are some other content that I won't put in that course, but... Um, Yeah, there is some stuff I'm going to put in the course. There's some stuff that's going to be its own course and that kind of stuff. XSS rat. I don't know about that. No comment on that. I don't know. I've thought about it. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to yet. Uh, James Cuddle has been on this show before. Uh, he came and did an interview with us a few months ago, which was awesome. It was one of the best uh, interviews I've had in a while. Also, uh, Chancellor, thank you so much for that prime uh, for nine months. I appreciate you so much. Dude, allergy season is killing me. Invite someone we don't know, someone new. Okay, that's actually a good challenge. Yeah, James does some really crazy, uh, some really, really crazy research. Just seeing, you know, his thought process on this show blew my mind. Yeah, the discount is going to be the same price as always. It's going to be forty nine ninety nine, unfortunately. Uh, hack Luke would be cool. The problem with Hack Luke and like Codingo and um, Shubs, it's um, time zone differences. So in Australia, if I were to host them right now, I think it's like 4 a.m. right now. Let's see. Let's say Melbourne, for example. Hey, Siri, what time is it in Melbourne, Australia? It's 5 a.m. 5 a.m. And that's a little bit unfair to have him on here. Gensec would be cool. Um, also with India, it's not a problem to bring them on. It's just late. It's going to be like midnight, 1 o'clock for them. But if they're open to it, maybe. I think Gensec is India. In India, right? I could be wrong. Yeah, I just got to be, you know, courteous and like mindful of the time zone and that kind of stuff. Like Europe is already hard enough because by the time I do the stream, it's like 8, 8.30 p.m. for them. Um, it's got to think about how to do it. And I don't want to do pre-recorded stuff. I may do a pre-recorded stuff. I don't know. I might do a pre-recorded stuff for uh, when I bring on Hack Luke or someone like him. Yeah, I know you're awake, <laughs> Mucha Gracia, but... Uh, if it's a matter of like if the guests want to stay awake, especially if they have work the next day, if they've woken up early, they're tired, like twelve thirty is a little bit too late, you know. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do a pre recorded show and then go on a break for me and you know, create that for you guys to watch. Croatia twenty one. Alright, chat, we're gonna bring on our guest. But before I do, where's everybody from? Where are you watching from? Dox yourself. Give me full address, including zip code and uh, apartment number. <laughs> where's everyone tuning in from? West Coast, the best coast. Stay blazing. Portugal, India, India. India, Bulgaria, that's far. India. India, France, Chicago, South Africa, France, USA, Saudi Arabia, nice. Brazil, Brazil, Netherlands, Czech Republic, Turkey, Iran. My Iranian viewers are in here. Bulgaria, Indonesia, France, Germany, Croatia, Ghost Town, Nevada, Ethiopia. 
You're saying LOL. I don't know if you're being for real. Italy, India, around the world, around the world. Sorry, stay blazing saying that got me singing. Uh, <laughs> India, UK, Ukraine, Hungary, Pakistan, Texas. I'll be at Texas Summit this year. I may actually be doing something big for the uh, Texas Cyber Summit this year. Egypt, India. All right, listen. I want to bring on our guest, but I need you guys to hype up the chat a little bit. Like, hype it up. And we're going to bring our guest. Just spam with emotes, and then we're going to bring our guest. And we're going to get started, all right? But I really need you guys to spam. Don't hold back. <sighs> Look, this screen that you guys are watching me on, let's let's fill it up with just emotes. All right, let's see. I think we're ready. Put this over here. Put this over here. That's more like it. Awesome. All right. Let's do our intro. All right. Our next guest for Live Recon is at Ethical Hacker, uh, the author behind WP scan and the damn vulnerable web app. We're gonna bring him on here. I don't have a live demo. I don't know if we're going to have a live demo. Um, we may or may not do one, but we're gonna bring him on, ask him about his background in bug bounties and hacking. Um, I don't know if Ryan does any bug bounty hunting, but um, I think a lot of the hackers already use, um, they already use WP scan. So I think it would be cool to understand why it was created the way it was created. And also understanding how to use it properly. And if we get a demo in, then even better. Uh, with that said, I'm going to switch our screen. I should probably put my headphones on. We are going to join this. Hold on, I got to make a quick change. And we're going to bring Ryan on here. Speakers on. All right, let's do this chat. Hey man, can you hear me okay? Hello, yeah, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Do you happen to have a webcam we can use to see your face? There I do, go. thank you. Awesome. You see me, yeah. Welcome, man, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for thank you for having me on. Uh, excited to uh, to talk about WP Scan and, and show you what it can do. Yeah, chat, let me know if you can hear Ryan. Uh, we're gonna do a quick sound check, let me know if you can hear us. Um, other than that, how's your evening so far? I know you're, uh, it's nighttime for you, so I appreciate you joining me on your Sunday evening and giving us, you know, a little bit of your time. Um, how's it going so far? How's your weekend? Yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy busy weekend. Um, just, we've just had the, uh, we just had a conversion in the garage into, into a new bedroom. So I've been, I've been like painting and, uh, and sorting the, the garden out and stuff like that. So it's been a crazy busy weekend. Um, yes, it's, it's 9 p.m. here, so it's not, quite dark yet but it's 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 sort of getting there so uh i wasn't sure whether to drink coffee or whiskey so i, I just went with water in the end <laughs> um, yeah, whatever you have in your cup no one knows what's in here i usually say it's coffee it's in here i usually yeah. say it's coffee in here but it may or may not be coffee who knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah may, may or may not be water you never know uh, so let's do this um i know who you are um i think everybody knows about wp scan but i want to know who you are what's your background like um, how long have you been in the InfoSec community? Yeah, so um, I've always been interested in, 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 in InfoSec and, and, and hacking and that kind of thing. Um, so when I first, when I got my first computers back in like 98, 99, uh, back then uh, uh, Yahoo had a, a Yahoo chat system with a, a channel that was called Hackers Lounge. And so I used to be in there, you know, to like 4 a.m. every night, you know, seeing what everyone was doing and, and getting to, uh, learning about um, about security, and it was pretty. Looking back, it was pretty script kiddie stuff, like uh, 
running a sub seven uh, <laughs> that kind of thing um but yeah that's that sort of got me into it uh, and then i had um i wanted to teach myself programming so i, I picked up the um one of the programming for dummies books when I was like 15 years old and taught, taught myself some basics of programming. Uh, and then I, I left it for, for like four or five years. Um, life got in the way, you know, working and, and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, and then I saw a local university was doing a, 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 an undergraduate degree in, in computer security. And uh, I didn't even know that was a thing at the time. Uh, so as soon as I saw it, I was crazy interested. And I put myself through college and then I, I enrolled on the course. And then I did a, a four-year undergraduate degree in, in computer security. Um, then I eventually got a, a job uh, pen testing. I did that for, for like four years at a, at a pen test company in the UK. Uh, and then eventually I started my own pen test company. And now I'm working full-time on, on WP Scan. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned school. Do you think it's a lot of the things... Um... Like one of the main questions that a lot of folks ask on this stream is, do you need to go to a you know a university to get a computer science degree in order to become successful or break into infosec? I, yeah, I don't think it's necessary at all. Um, for me, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it gave me. See, I never I never graduated uh, secondary school, so I, I left school when I was like fifteen years old and never never did all that thing. Um, so for me, it was kind of a way to prove to myself that I could do it and, and mm -hmm. I could um, do the academic thing. Um, but yeah, I, I learned, I did, what was good about university is you learn the basics about everything. So like right. networking, I did the CCNA, um, which I think I probably would never have done if I would have just gone uh, straight, you know, in, into a job or, 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 or self-taught, for example. Um, so for me, yeah, it was definitely useful for me. It, I, 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 I agree it's not for everybody uh, and yeah. you certainly don't need to have a degree to, to work in, in security. But um, for me personally, it was super helpful and um, I would definitely do it again. Um, but yeah, it definitely depends on the individual person and where you're at in your life and, and that kind of thing. You mentioned CCNA. Do you have any other certificates? Do you think those are necessary for InfoSec? What's your take on it? Uh, I So I, I've got the degree and I've got the CCNA. Uh, apart from that, no, I don't have any other uh, certificates um i did try in, in the uk i don't know if you're aware they have like a check status where where if you have it you can work on government pen test jobs mm -hmm. um i did try, try that a few times I, I didn't quite get it i failed a couple of times um but yeah stuff like offensive security um i do some awesome courses i don't have that i don't have that certification but uh i, I would like to um and i think from, from the feedback i've heard and and the guys that work on that, I, I, it looks pretty, pretty awesome. So, um, yeah, again, I think they're useful, um, not necessary, but, uh, but yeah, definitely useful to have. Is it good to have? I mean, um, it's kind of the same thing here in the States. It's not that you need it if you have a good resume, but it definitely does get you past HR in that first screening interview. But a lot of people think like, oh, I don't have, you know, my OSCP or whatever, CH, which I don't believe in myself, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a good way to learn. But it's, you know, every all those things are, you know, they're online if you want to learn them on your own. Yeah, definitely. I mean, YouTube, especially now, there's like loads of uh, content on YouTube, loads of quality mm -hmm. content, like Live Overflow. I know you're familiar with him. Um, and lo lots of other YouTube creators. Um, and yeah, a bunch of articles. And now you've got book bounties, which when I was starting out, they were kind of a thing, but definitely not as, as much as they are today. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can definitely uh, teach yourself, I think nowadays with free content, not, no problem at all. I think that getting past HR thing that you said, I think if you have certificates, it will get you past maybe HR in, in the big companies, mm -hmm. like the big uh, blue chip companies. But if you're working for startups, I don't think certificates are so important either. You know, you can start as a, as a junior, as long as you prove yourself that you, you know, you're contributing back to the community and you can prove that, um, you, you at least know the basics. I think um, working for a startup or an actual pen test company you probably don't need certificates either, but it certainly helps. Yeah. Um, what made you create DVWA? First of all, I didn't know you were behind DVWA uh, <laughs> when I was doing my research on you when we talked about bringing you on here. Like I know about WP Scan, um, but I didn't know you were behind DVWA, and it kind of blew my mind that it's been one of those. You know, I used a crap out of DVWA six, seven years ago when I first started. You know, there was a, one of the only tools that was out there for uh, people to actually practice and learn. Um, what gave you the idea of creating it? Like, what sparked that? You know, the need for it. Yeah. So um, 
so when I, I just started university and I, I realized um, they didn't have a course specifically for web application security. And that's where, that's where my, my interests were really. So I decided, I, I thought, okay, so if university is not going to teach me, I'm going to teach myself because I, I had plenty of time on my hands. So I thought the best way to teach myself was to create um, vulnerable examples. For example, a, a vulnerable PHP uh, page, vulnerable to say cross-site scripting, and then I created another page vulnerable to SQL injection and I'd practice on those, another page vulnerable to CSRF. And then I, I sort of thought, well, it'd be pretty cool if I could put all these together into like a, a web application and then put that out there for others to, to practice on too. Uh, so that was back in 2009, I think. I, I released that initially as open source. And then it's uh, got lots of contributors over the years. Um, and right now, I, for the past, say, three years, I've not really touched it. Yeah. Um, but it, it is being actively maintained by, um, by, by other people right now. So, so it's, it's, it's still ongoing. Um, and also right now, there's a lot of alternatives out there. When I first started DVWA, there they weren't, I don't think there were any, maybe there were one or two possibly. Um, but not, right now, there's, there's, there's also many alternatives to DVWA. So, so yeah, still. Did cool. you did you ever think DVWA would become as big as it did today? Like it's one of the, like for almost anybody that does web apps, that's one of the things that they go after. You know, like everybody that asks like, hey, where do I practice? You know, Juice Shop, OS Juice Shop is pretty cool. It's came out. Yeah. I think I think you opened, you paved the way for these kinds of applications to come out and exist. But did you think it would become such a big project that so many, I think thousands of thousands of people are, are using DVW nowadays. Did you ever, you know, think about it or, you know, cross your mind at all? Not really. I mean, obviously when, when you put, when you put code out there, you, you hope that it becomes popular and you hope that people like it. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it went far beyond I ever thought. It actually it landed me my my first pen test job. Um, so I created DVWA, released it, um, and then someone reached out. Uh, a, 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 the owner of a pen test company reached out on Twitter and said, oh, "I've heard your your work about DVWA. I'm really impressed. Uh, do you want to come down for an interview?" So I went down for an interview and got the job. So DVWA really got me the the foot in the door, of, you know, in, as a professional career. So yeah, so it's super awesome. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's. There is a need for these kinds of things. Um, I think it's cool to go and like learn about these different vuln types, but nothing's going to beat the hands-on approach. And I think there's two different approaches, right? There is a DVWA approach where it says, "Hey, click on here to learn XSS. Click on here to learn SQL injection." And it, it's great that you have the easy, medium, hard levels. You know, you just flip the switch, and it yeah. becomes harder because then you get to go to the next level of it. But there's also the um, the approach of like knowing how to find these vulns in a re real application. I think that's when OWASP, Juice Shop, and those similar vulnerability uh, vulnerable apps come into play. But I think yeah. DVW is a great job of like uh, giving you a structured way of learning topic by topic, just the basics. This is how you exploit a SQL injection. I'm telling you there's a vulnerability here. And then you take that and you go to the Juice Shops and Bug Bounties even, and you start, you know, you tra it's a knowledge transfer. You take those skills, and you transfer them over uh, into hacking and finding votes. Yeah, definitely. Um, back when I back when I created DVWA, there weren't. I don't think there was any bug bounties around, or at least that I was aware of. Uh, so at that time, that was the only place I could really practice um, web security legally. Um, nowadays, it, it, it's different, but back then it was. Um, yeah, it was the only place I could really practice uh, legally. Um, and in, DV, in DV, DVWA, there's, all, there's the known vulnerabilities, but there's still some unknown vulnerabilities there. So you, you can still find some unknown stuff there that's, that's not um, documented. Nice. Um, but yeah, mostly it, it, is, it is, you know, documented and, and to practice with that way. Do you do bug bounties yourself? So I, I, I did do them when they started, uh, when they first started becoming a thing. So I did uh, Facebook, Mozilla, Nice. Uh, a handful of others, but this is like maybe like eight years ago now. Um, I don't think there were. Oh yeah, no, I did get a payout for Facebook. I got a quite a big payout for Facebook back in the day. Um, but I never took it ser seriously. I spent maybe you know a few odd nights working on it. Um, but I, ne I never got deep into it like like uh, some people do nowadays. You know, some people are like millionaires off it nowadays. <laughs> I never, I never got, never got that deep into it. It's become a. It's become a weird thing seeing bug bounties go from hobbies to full time work, and you know the fact that these big companies, like you mentioned, Facebook, Mozilla, Google, Google yeah. Twitter, they're all willing to work with hackers. Um, I'm curious. So, you, what 
how did WP Scan happen? Why was it? Was this? What's the backstory to why you decided to write this thing called WP Scan? Um, now that I know thousands of thousands of hackers and pen testers use. Yeah. So, um, so I had my own WordPress blog where I was uh, blogging about um, things that I was learning at university and and blogging about DVWA and that kind of thing. And then it was on. I think it was on the book track mailing list. Uh, someone posted a, a vulnerability on there and I wanted to see if it affected my own WordPress website. So I created a proof of concept for it uh, and, and, and used it on my own site. And then I started to, so I was getting into Ruby at the time, writing Ruby scripts. So I started to build that out. Like I, I created a, a, a brute forcing, a web, a WordPress brute force tool. Okay. Password brute force tool. Um, and then, and yeah, I started tacking things on there, more functionality, more functionality. And I, it became what it is today. I got many, um, lots of contributors came along. Um, Erwan, uh, is, uh, he works for WP Scan now. He, he rewrote it. He's re rewritten my original code like twice since then. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a great programmer. Uh, and he was, he was better at programming than me. So, um, so yeah. Uh, and yeah, we just, we just got some awesome contributions. And then it, it, it started to get to the stage where it was uh, unmanageable in my spare time. Um, like the expectations of, of the users were just way too high for doing this as a hobby. Um, so we, we thought if we either going to, uh, we had two options, abandon the project or, or try to monetize it somehow to make it worth our time working on. Um, and we went for the latter. We, we, we tried to monetize it and that's, that's where we are today. And um, how did it start? Well, what was the first, you know, with, with WP Scan itself, was it the brute forcing that was the first module? And then how did like how did it expand? Like, what's the history there? Yeah, I think it was the I think it was a brute force module. So just like password brute forcing on the WP admin page, and then I think I did uh, plugin enumeration. So I, I figured out you could enumerate what plugins were installed on a WordPress website from a black box perspective. Uh, so I, I implemented that. And then I thought, well, if you can find out which plugins installed, it would be pretty cool if you could find out what known vulnerabilities affect that plugin. So I started to um, record in XML files uh, known vulnerabilities for specific plugins. And, um, and that grew like crazy unmanageable as well. We had like these huge XML files and it was, it was awful. Uh, so I decided, I think it was like 2005, um, to create a, 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 an online database of the vulnerabilities um, with some funding. I don't know if you're aware of Brucon in Brussels, a, a hacker conference there. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, so they, they used to do a what they call five by five projects where they give um, uh, cash incentives for researchers or people who want to build new tools and things. Mm -hmm. And they, give us, they gave us uh, a few thousand uh, euros to get that started. Um, and, and, that's, and then I created that and it actually, the, the vulnerability database became more popular than the tool itself, um, which, which is pretty crazy. And, uh, and yeah, and so we decided to, to monetize the, the, the vulnerability database in the end. Walk me through it. You mentioned you figured out a way to enumerate um, plugins from a black box perspective, yeah. right? How does that work? So if, you know, if WP Scan didn't exist, or if I wanted to be stubborn and do it manually, how would I um, enumerate these plugins? Is it just simply looking at the DOM and seeing the WP content plugins folder, or is it an actual like structure where I've seen the plugins used? Yeah, so uh, plugins are installed in a, in a, in a known uh, folder uh, mm -hmm. in, in WordPress. It's wp-content forward slash plugins forward slash the plugin name. And each, each plugin name is a, has a slug, so that's unique to that specific plugin. Well, it should be unique. There are some edge cases where plugins do have the same name, but it's but it generally each plugin has its own slug. So um, each plugin also should have like a readme file um, and license files and that kind of thing. So I, I figured out if we could just send a HTTP request to, to, the, to, to that directory, uh, and, and look at the, the HTTP uh, response code. So if that's a 200 or 404 or whatever, uh, then we could determine if that if that plugin's um, in, installed or not. So you're doing a brute force to see if these things are there. Yeah, uh, so, and to do the brute force, you obviously need to know 
what the plugin is called first, right? right? So you need to so you need to, the, to request the plugin slug. So you need to know the slug in the first place. Uh, so what we've done is we've been collecting plugin slugs um, since the since like we started the WP scan. I think we have like off the top of my head, it might be ninety three thousand different plugin slugs um, in, in our database. Uh, and yeah, so we you, you call that that slug and see what the response code is. Um, and based on that, you determine whether it's installed. We we do we, we do do a lot of other clever things as well now. That was like the basic stuff at the very yeah. beginning. We do like a lot of client side fingerprinting now. So we look for a JavaScript file specific to, to plugins, um, which will tell us um, if if that if if it's that plugin that's installed. For example, if if, if a plugin has a JavaScript file with um, a, a line that's it's, it's unique to that plugin, we can determine that, that it's, it's that plugin that's installed. Another thing we can do is what we call passive enumeration. Mm -hmm. So instead of just calling the, because it's, it's pretty verbose, right? If you're, if you're calling thousands of uh, plugin slugs in the WP content directory, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to get noticed, um, or you'd hope it get noticed. So we do passive um, enumeration too, where we look at some plugins give away that they're installed on the index page of a WordPress site. So exa for example, they put powered by um, whatever, um, right, right. WordFence or whatever. Um, so we, we also look at that as well. Um, so we can try and be stealthy uh, and not um, not try and get make too much noise as well. And then what, um, what made you guys go after themes the, the, the plugins make sense right people are going to pop the plugins and yeah. um there's a there's a market for it and especially some of these plugins that are used widely by a ton of um wordpress you know wordpress blogs or companies um what made the themes becoming a point of interest themes yeah well they they, they they're affected by known vulnerabilities it, it is it is a lot less um so if, if you look at the average wordpress blog um there was some research done recently. I, I forget what it was called. The Web Web Almanac, I think it was called. Um, so th there was some research done on how many, on average, WordPress plugins a, a WordPress site had installed. And on average, it came out like twenty-two uh, WordPress plugins per per WordPress website. And if you look at the themes, it's it's much less. It's like one or two themes. So there are the attack surface is much less, but there are still vulnerabilities that affect themes. And if you're a, if you're a user um, looking to protect a site or you're looking to do a bug bounty, um, it, you know you want to know about it. if if there's an unauthenticated cross site scripting in the theme, you know you want to know about that. Yeah, so we also do, but, it, but it is much less. I mean, it's it's almost negligible. Um, if you go to the wpscan.com forward slash statistics um, URL, there uh, we break down the vulnerabilities we have per plugins for themes, um, the, the number of vulnerable plugins and all that kind of thing. So we have a lot more data on there um, regarding the breakdown on, on, on statistics. I'm actually pulling it up right now just to see what it looks yeah. like uh, on the screen. Holy crap, 22,000 number of vulnerabilities in our database, uh, 4,500 unique vulnerabilities, 93,000 plugins, 22,000 themes, almost 500 WordPress versions. Holy crap, that's a lot. 2700 CVEs. And those have vulnerabilities by component. 88% are uh, plugins, 8% is themes, and only 5% is WordPress. Is that core vulnerabilities, like in WordPress itself versus plugins? Yeah, WordPress core, yeah. Wow, that is insane. Yeah. That's insane. So, so you can see the, the attack surface there is if, if you're gonna if you're gonna try and hack a, a WordPress blog, you, you're going for the plugins. The most yeah. you're gonna have most chance by by um by, by attacking the plugins. And that's that's why we keep the date space there to, um, to, to, there's just so many vulnerabilities. It's crazy. I mean, each plugin is, you know, anyone can create a, a WordPress plugin and upload it to the repository. There are some sanity checks there by the WordPress team. They do some, um, very basic code reviews to make sure there's no obvious security issues. Um, but yeah, it's not perfect. And also that's just on the initial submission of the plugin. So every update thereafter. So anytime the developer pushes code, after the initial commit is not checked by anyone. So you can imp you can introduce a vulnerability at any time in the plugin's lifetime and it won't be checked by, by yeah. anyone. 
Um, before I ask this next question, I want to give uh, chat a chance to drop any questions. If you have any questions specifically for WP Scan for Ryan, uh, drop, drop them in the chat. Um, are there any? So I know you guys have the. The only reason why I know the theme and the plugin thing is because I've used the two. You know, that's a, the first thing I do is integrate it for those two and um, take it from there. Are there any functionalities that I may have missed? That's a big part of WP Scan. That's very useful as a part of your um, testing a WordPress uh, website when it comes out to using WP Scan. Yeah, um, yeah. So we do. I mean, password brute forcing is is, a, is quite a big thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we do also do some quite clever things there. Um, but apart from that, excuse me, we do um, uh, the wp-config.php file. We'll check for backups of that. That's often um, backed up by, by developers. Uh, we look for database export files. So a lot of WordPress developers will export the database to the web route with predictable names. Um, so we enumerate those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, there's the XML, infamous XML RPC uh, API, which gets reported a lot in bug bounty. Mm -hmm. um, that was a tough one to figure out, actually. I, can you talk about that a little bit? Where are some of the vulnerabilities that are actually, I'm not, I don't want to say, I don't want to dismiss it and say it's not valuable, but there are some vulnerabilities that don't make sense if people report them. But I know that it's also useful ones. What are some of the useful cases that you have seen with those kinds of vulnerabilities? Any particular example that stands out to you? Yeah, I mean, the XML RPC interface, has, it's it's seen every kind of vulnerability you can think of in the past, uh, I, I would I would assume. So if um, there was a huge one a few years ago where it was a server-side request forgery in the XML RPC, so you could um, uh, call local files. Mm -hmm. um, what else has there been? I'm, there was like, I'm sure there's like unauthenticated SQL injection in there a few years wow. ago. So, so if you go to, again, if you go to wpscan.com in the search uh, bar at the top, if you search for XML, I think we use XML dash RPC, or it might be just one word, XML RPC, and you'll give you a full list of all the vulnerabilities that affect, um, have affected XML RPC in the past. In WordPress core. Um, yeah, and there was an interesting one. I think it's been patched now, but for a long time, there was a vulnerability in XML RPC where you could send in one HTTP request, you could send multiple API calls. So that was useful because you could do a, an authentication request in one HTTP request, but then have like say 100 password guesses in that one HTTP oh, request. Okay. So, you could, so you could speed up your password brute force by like 100 or 500 times even. Um, and that was made password brute forcing super quick. I yeah, think it's been patched in the past, in the last few versions. Has WordPress ever reached out to you guys about anything with WP scan since you guys are so focused on their products? Yeah, so they, they sponsor us. Um, they, wow. they sponsor... Uh, WP scan for the past two years now. Um, we go to all the all the word camps, uh, so we try to be involved in the. So the 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 word, WordPress powers like f if you believe the statistics, which I think are pretty accurate, WordPress powers forty percent of the web right now, um, which which is huge. And uh, so yes, yeah, so the the user base, the WordPress user base is is much bigger than the security user base. So we. So we try and cater for the WordPress market as well as the pen test market as well, or bug bounty market. We try and, and cater for, for, for both markets, but it's a, uh, yeah, it's a huge, um, it's, it's a huge, huge uh, company and, and huge um, market share uh, on, on the web. Um, apart from that, we've found, well, not just me, but our team, uh, Erwan and Chris, have found vulnerabilities in WordPress core in the past, just because we're looking at this all the time. Yeah. Um, and as well on the plugin vulnerabilities, we're constantly triaging them with WordPress. So when we, uh, someone reports, uh, when a security, we I had some issues with my internet, which unfortunately kicked me out. Um, let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you see me. I'm going to fix this right now. Uh, we're almost there. I don't understand what that happened. Let me know if you hear me, chat.
Sorry about that. I, unfortunately, this doesn't regularly happen, but once in a while there is a little bit of an issue with my PC sometimes. Uh, can you hear me okay? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit quiet. Give me one second. I'll fix that right now. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, that's better, yeah. Awesome. Sorry about that. Uh, chat again. Sorry about that. This We do things live, unfortunately. And when you do things live, things could go wrong. Um, and I completely lost track of what we were talking about, unfortunately, due to my yeah. panic. Um, we're talking about WordPress, working with WordPress, and you guys look for vulnerabilities or you know, triaging with them uh, yeah. as you go. So they have adapted WP Scan in a way to kind of protect their um, customer base. Yeah, so, so the way, uh, so WordPress is open source, right? Um, but they are uh, sort of managed by a company called Automatic. And um, so the way Automatic manages WordPress is they kind of like to leave, um, leave things open to competition to, to create businesses around the WordPress ecosystem. So if, if they, they would prefer that uh, an outside company would, you know, pop up and, and I'd say business would pop up and, and, and sort of um, create a business to, to, to do those kind of things. Stuff like, uh, you've got stuff like caching and uh, and businesses like that, they all work around WordPress. I mean, it's, it's a huge, huge market uh, is WordPress and there's many, many millions of dollars. <laughs> Companies worth many, many millions. So, um, so yeah, they, they kind of prefer to leave the solutions to the open market and people create solutions, other people create solutions for, for problems. Very cool. Um, I know there was a question about this in the chat. Uh, somebody asked, "How do you, how do you document um, these vulnerabilities as they come?" So, if I drop a vulnerability tomorrow, there's a CV that comes out. Is it automatically being pulled from some RSS feed? Uh, do you guys manually do that? How does that look? Yeah. Uh, so all the, every single vulnerability that enters our database is manually entered. There's nothing automated. Um, yeah. Like uh, there's a lot of crap out there. We, we see a we get a we see a lot of reports which is just rubbish. Um, maybe because the researcher just didn't have the skill level. Maybe they're trying to get clout by making stuff up. Um, yeah. We've also seen uh, WordPress plugin competitors. Uh, create fake vulnerabilities for other plugins. Uh, so we really have to be careful that whatever enters the database has to be uh, a real vulnerability. So everything gets entered into the database manual, manually. Everything is uh, checked. Um, the level of checking depends on the on the technical details that we receive. If it, if it looks a bit iffy, we'll go all the way through to creating a proof of concept. If, you know, if it looks technically sound, we probably won't verify it completely. Um, and yeah, so when, when we we mainly um, so we do we do search we have like alerts uh, uh, on the web and Twitter and that kind of thing looking out for people talking about uh, security vulnerabilities in, in WordPress. When we see those, we'll, we can add them ourselves. We have a lot of security researchers um, that are sort of mostly dedicated to WordPress plugin security, mm -hmm. and they will submit vulnerabilities to us via our submission form. Um, and yeah, so when we receive those, we'll add data such as we'll add CVSS ratings, we'll add a description, um, we, you know, um, all, all sorts of details there. Uh, we're also a, uh, a CNA, a CVE numbering authority. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So we actually, um, assign CV, CVE numbers yeah, yeah. For, for WordPress plugins and, and themes. Um, so yeah, so a lot, a lot of security researchers come to us asking for their CVE number. And at that time we'll ask, is it okay if we also add that to our database and 99.9% .9 of the time, that's fine. Um, so yeah, that's how, that's how we get our, our vulnerabilities. Um, and anyone who does submit vulnerability to us, a, a security researcher, we do like monthly giveaways. Um, for example, like nice. this, this hoodie, we recently did a, a giveaway on these hoodies, uh, Amazon vouchers. Um, we're also doing for WP scans, 10th birthday, which is June 16th, we're doing a um, OSCP uh, course giveaway Very to, cool. to, to a security researcher, which is 
submitted a vulnerability to us um, so far in 2021. So, so yeah, we, 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 we try and give back to those who, who submit issues to us. Um, I think you already kind of answered this question, but um, the chat wants to kind of hear, do you guys do any like static code analysis on WordPress? Um, and have you guys ever had a, you know, have you found any old days in WordPress itself or any other, you know, popular plugins as WP scan itself as a company and organization? Yeah, so the most recent one was found by my colleague Erwan. So there's three of us who work on WP Scan, um, and two of us who work on it full time. Uh, so my colleague Erwan, he found recently, like two versions ago, a, a CSRF vulnerability, which allowed you to change uh, the background image of a WordPress blog. Not crazy uh, risky, but still a nice, nice find. Yeah. Um, I found some years ago now uh, in the Yoast. SEO plugin, which was the most popular at the time. I still think it is right now. I found an, I think it was an authenticated SQL injection in that. Um, and yeah, oh yeah, I think my other colleague, Chris, may have found the server-side request forgery vulnerability in the XML RPC interface. Nice. I'm not 100% sure if he actually found it or just wrote the puck, but I think he may have found it also. Um, yeah, the, yeah, we, we, we do do... Right now, actually, Erwan is working on uh, some code, which does some static code analysis on plugins. Um, and believe it or not, WordPress core is is quite secure nowadays. Yeah. It, has a, it has a terrible reputation, but I think that's more due to the plugins. People, yep. if, if a WordPress site gets hacked because of a plugin, they're not blaming the plugin, they're blaming WordPress um, most of the time. So. I don't think it's even the plugins fault if you don't update your plugins. You can't, you know, blame the plugin yeah. if there's an update for it. I guess how most of the sites I have buddies that you know do marketing for a bunch of companies, and he's always telling me how his sites are getting hacked. And I'm like, and the first thing I always say is, "Have you checked out your plugins?" Exactly. And that's yeah. always the first case. Definitely. And just recently, um, they they have um, put the functionality there for automatic updates in plugins. Okay. Um, it's uh, disabled by default. But you can enable it, but it is it is pretty risky. Like like if the developer messes up the update, your whole site's fucked. Oh, sorry, I don't know if you can swear on it. Oh no, you, this is a this is a very open show. You you please do say whatever you feel like, my friend. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so so yes, if a developer pushes a, a broken update, your website's fucked, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's a risk it's a risky click to enable automatic updates for plugins, but you know that as a first step and hopefully in the future, um, updates will get more stable and that will become uh, enabled by, by default, hopefully in the future. Uh, here is the most exciting part, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Do you happen to have a vulnerable WordPress instance we can work on as a demo? Yeah, I do, yes. Yeah. So uh, earlier today, I set up a couple of quick um, uh, hosts to, to, to demo WP Scan on. Cool, if you're up for it, I would love to have you share your screen um, by yeah. presenting on Google. And when you're ready, we can just uh, kind of do a quick, I want to kind of see like, so I do, there's two versions. So this is the first time I've done the hybrid version of Live Recon. It's either I interview someone or I bring them on to show how they do it. In your case, we kind of did a hybrid version. I kind of interviewed you on your, you know, your background and that sort of thing. And then I also would love to see you. I want to see how you would personally use WP Scan and kind of like on our call outs, things that you look for, the commands you would run and kind of walk us through it if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'll present... Oh, entire screen or window. <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, and at any point, if you want me to take you off the screen, I have the ability to do that. You just let me know. I can switch between screens. If you want me to switch between screens right now and have you give you some, you know, time to figure no, it out. No, it's cool. It's okay. cool. I'll do, I'll do entire screen and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully nothing, okay. uh, nothing embarrassing comes out. <laughs> so can, can you see my screen now? Uh, not yet. You haven't shared anything just yet. Okay. Uh, I want to see. Okay, yeah, there we go, yeah. There we go. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Yep, awesome. Uh, right, so, right, let's fire up the website uh, first. So here I'm using uh, some software called Local by Flywheel. Okay. And this lets you set up WordPress, local WordPress installations like with a click of a button. Super useful if you're um, doing any local testing or proof of concept creation if you want to do that locally rather than, than live. Uh, so I've got two sites here. We're going to just start um, the first web, 
WordPress site. So let's just check if that's running. Okay, that's running there. I was authenticated before, so let's log out of there. Okay. Yeah. So that's the the WordPress website there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run web suite also, just so you can see the requests the WP scan is making in the background if we have to toggle to that. Awesome. Okay. Let's get web suite running. Okay, temporary project. Okay, uh, proxy, turn that off. And we'll go through the new built-in browser. Make, makes things so much easier. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, turn that off. And let's just make sure Oh, the requests are going through. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now WP scan. Okay. Uh, so first thing we want to do is well, to install WP scan is gem install WP scan, right? Uh, yep. So we have it's a Ruby gem. It's written, it's written in Ruby. Uh, okay. So that should install um could you do me a favor actually and zoom in yeah. on the terminal for just for a little bit so like the chat could also see i mean this is a little self explanatory but when we actually use the tool it would be helpful thank yeah. you appreciate it okay. right yeah maybe i shouldn't have uh, installed, <laughs> installed it just then okay no, it's okay right. I, I already have it installed okay, okay. so uh We'll skip that part. I didn't realize it takes so long. So second thing, um, we want to update our local databases. So the local databases don't contain vulnerability data. What they do contain is is metadata um, regarding, it. like I mentioned before, the plugin enumeration. Like we look at specific JavaScript files and that kind of thing. That's all in the local database. Uh, so can you see my, the screen there? Yep. Is that cool? Yep. OK. Um, right. So basic scan. First, we're going to look at the help information. So dash dash help. It's taking a while. OK. Um, yeah, so that's how you get your basic help information. If you want further verbose help, it's dash dash HH. We're going to do a stealthy scan at first. And you can see here um, that's alias to use a random user agent. So we try and bypass basic uh, WAFs, basically using the passive uh, detection mode and uh, passive plugin detection mode as well. So okay. we're going to run the review scan URL. We're going to grab that URL from here. Okay, and then we're going to do a, a stealthy scan. This is like uh, if you, yeah, if you don't mm, want to be seen or, or keep under the radar. You don't want to get caught by the blue team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's just doing, I think, I, I can't remember, we can see how many requests it makes anyway in a minute, but I, it should be very minimal. Okay, so what did it just find for us? It found some interesting HTTP response headers. So we found the version of Nginx and PHP, basic stuff there. We also got the version of WordPress installed, which is the latest version in this case, 5.7.1, uh, which was released uh, 15th of April. And that's the latest version it says there. It tells us how it found the version. So it found it from the uh, RSS generator where it's output. We've got the theme in use, which is a default theme, 2021. Uh, what else have we got? Didn't find any plugins passively. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, it did, it did find plugins passively. It found contact form seven. It found the version of that plugin, which it says is up to date. Uh, it found the download manager plugin. Uh, it's out of date. Yeah, it says it's yeah, it's, it, so it says it's out of date. So it, um, the latest version is three one two four, and it thinks the version is three one eighteen with sixty percent confidence. Uh, so that may be wrong. Uh, so okay. the confidence level is because we're doing it passively, the confidence will be less. If we do this more aggressively, we should get like hundred percent confidence levels. 
uh, and the photo gallery uh, plugin there. Again, the version. Um, again, this is a, only a forty percent confidence on the version, and it tells us it checked these um, CSS and JS files to find the, the version right. number. Okay. Yeah. Uh, WordPress SEO. Uh, again, yeah. There we go. All that information. Um, yeah. So that's a stealthy scan. Uh, we can see how many requests it. Oh no, we didn't actually go through Burp Suite. Sorry. Um, okay, we didn't proxy that through Burp Suite. Uh, so proxy one two seven zero zero one IP eighty. So hopefully, that should now proxy through Burp. Just let me check the. Oh, where is it? Oh yeah, it should be on eighty eighty. And yeah, there's some stuff in your HTTP history already. It looks like. Yeah, I think that's from when I first. Yeah. It's... Uh, okay, yeah, so I need to put the uh, scheme in the proxy. Well, uh, okay, yeah. There right. we go, okay. Okay. So we can start to see the requests here in the background. Um, yeah, so we only made what, uh, da, 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 like four or five requests for all oh. that information. So for all those plugins installed, uh, the version of WordPress uh, and the versions of the plugins as well. So it's like four or five requests. Um, yeah, basically hardly anything. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so next, uh, what should we do? Yeah. So now we'll just take the, the stealthy tab off here. That should be a little bit more aggressive this time. Uh, not completely aggressive. There are, there are different levels. So there's, there's passive, there's mixed which is a bit of both, and then there's aggressive. So we've got these different um, enumeration models. What does, it do, what does it do by default when you don't give it any arguments at all? Um, so, yeah, so like we have now, um, it will do uh, the passive plugin enumeration, and here it's doing the configuration backups uh, detection enumeration. Um, yeah, I think that's it. We're actually going to change this behavior very soon. We're going to change the default behavior. Like uh, we have the code ready, and we're just waiting to to release it. Um, so, so in the future, when you give zero parameters, it's going to do basically nothing, and you're going to have to give additional parameters to make it do stuff. Um, okay. We think that's a a better approach because um, right now people just run it with no parameters and think, oh, is that is that all WP Scan does? Right. Whereas, we're going to encourage them to use the the the, the arguments to, to to get the full full data right. Uh, so yeah, so here it did uh, an additional check of looking for config backups. We can see that in Burp. I can't remember exactly how many there are. It should tell us here actually. 137 different checks for config configuration backup. Um, we that's also looked for yeah, that's a lot of combinations too. Yeah, and that was recently updated. Uh, thanks to um, a guy on Twitter called Random Random Robbie. He, he gave us a of course it's there. Random Robbie. All right. Yeah, you know him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, he's seen some real. He has a list of real world backups from somewhere I'm not sure where, and uh, he he donated those to us. So so they're pretty new. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So right. So let's now let's do um, aggressive uh, plugin enumeration. Right. So we want to know. Uh, so we put the dash E for enumeration. Okay. Um, we're just going to do vulnerable plugins or VP for vulnerable plugins. Yep. And now we're going to need to state an aggressive uh, scan, which I think is dash dash plugin enumeration. Right, I'm going to have to check this in my own user documentation. So if you bear with me. It's all good, man. Uh, it happens. Yeah. So where is my... WP scan team, WP scan. Okay, yeah, so by default, plugin enumeration is passive, but we're, again, we're going to change that to aggressive very soon so that um, you won't have to state it in the future. It's plugins detection, there we go. That's the one we're looking for. Yeah, so we have um, documentation now. I'll show you that again. So I think you're missing an end for plugin detection, just a heads up. And I'm not sure if I spelled aggressive right. We'll soon find out. I'll check that. I think you did. There we go. Yeah. Aggressive, yeah. Yeah, so documentation can be found on our wiki there and installation, all that kind of thing. 
Right, so now it's checking just for vulnerable plugins. I don't know if you can see that at the bottom. Let's hide that there. Oops. Yeah. So it's uh, 2,567 plugins which are known to be vulnerable. Wow. It's a lot of okay. plugins too. Yeah, so that's going to take quite uh, some time to do, I think. Yeah, so that's going to take too long to, to complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to do um, popular plugins. Uh, so just the plugins that are popular based on uh, what WordPress deems as being popular. Um, so I was looking for like the top X numbers of plugins that have been installed based on the stats that they have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I just need to check. Uh, oh, yeah, so it's just 1P there, just for popular plugins, just 1P. I thought it was 2. Okay. 1P there. Uh, yeah, so we're going to do popular plugins instead of all vulnerable plugins. I think it should be less, so it should save us some time. Yeah, so 1,500. That still might take some time there. Oh, I said it's a minute, I think, right? Yeah, a minute. it's not too bad. Uh, so what else have we got here while it's doing that? So oh, yeah, someone, in, sorry to interrupt you, because someone in the chat says, um, agent, so can you use different proxies for each request? Don't know why uh, it would. No. Um, I, I'm assuming you could pipe the WP scan through something else that could do that for you. Um, uh, but no, in this, in this instance, we're just using um, one proxy um, for the request. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's tools out there where you could where you could pipe to be scan to and it would, it would do that for you. Uh, so here we find the infamous XML RPC um, interface uh, and it gives you some some links there. There's some uh, Metasploit modules there, some more vulnerabilities. Um, okay, that's still running. Uh, what else have we got? Robots.txt file with some interesting entries there. We find the readme file, which uh, it used to give an accurate version of the WordPress install, but now it's just a major version. Um, so if we take, we can have a look at it. Uh, so we have installed version, where was it? 571. And the readme will tell us. Uh, have they removed that completely now? Oh no, they removed that completely now in the latest. Which doesn't version. make sense because you can still enumerate it, but yeah, 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 it's still enumerated. Enumerated. So but yeah, it used yeah. to give the exact version number that was installed. So it used to be like super easy. You just go to readme.html and get the the version number. Um, WP cron. Uh, so that can be used to create a denial of service condition in some circumstances. Okay. Uh, some some uh, further references there to look that up. And we should be done with plugins Almost soon. There. That's yeah. quick. So yeah, you, you can you can uh, tweak the threads and stuff as well. So if you want to like make it faster, uh, you can add, um, you can use multiple threads and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and just to point out that so far we've not used an API token. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did introduce the need for an API token uh, last year. But that's only for the uh, vulnerability data. Um, so we just did plugin enumeration. So what we get is the plugins that are installed and the versions, um, but we won't get the vulnerability data because we didn't put the API token, which talks to our vulnerability database. So is that how I would tell you, for example, if there is a on auth XSS, it's using the API to get you the vulnerability that's for that particular version? Exactly, yeah. Um, uh, but okay. you, can, you can easily do it without an API, the API, right. the API just makes it convenient. It just gives it in this output, but we can easily take the uh, plugin slug there, download manager in this case. You can go to wpscan.com forward slash plugin, then the slug. And then you get all the vulnerabilities that affect uh, that version. Oh, sorry, that plugin. And then if we look at the version, so 3.118. You can just installed. look for it, yeah. Yeah, and then you just look for it here. So, which, so we have a authenticated PHP file upload to RCE in 3.1.19. So we know that this plugin is vulnerable to this vulnerability based on the version number. Uh, Does a WP scan, it's just a scan. It doesn't actually explain anything for you, right? You would have to manually look for that particular POC and do it. Uh, that's correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I did, 
I did create a proof of concept where we did link into Metasploit. Um, and so, so if you find a vulnerable plugin, it would automatically ask if you wanted to exploit it. And it would go to Metasploit and fire off the, if there was a Metasploit exploit for it, it would fire off the exploit automatically. But that was the kind of proof of concept. And um, yeah, we didn't take it any further than that, really. Uh, so yeah, so right, let's go back to this uh, vulnerability here. Um, yeah, so it's giving you a description of the vulnerability there. Um, it tells you it was fixed in version 3.1.19. We're running 3.1.18, so we know that it's vulnerable. Um, so a member of our team found this. I believe it was Erwan. Nice, uh, that's awesome. Um, this, uh, when it was published, that kind of thing. Uh, so mm. we have other plugins here, Photo Gallery. Workplace and you guys, uh, do you guys host the POCs for each vulnerability within WP Scan? Um, uh, yes, um, they the POCs are only available though to enterprise users. Got it, um, okay. I believe I think that's right. Uh, is that right? I'm not sure. Or maybe just via the APIs for enterprise users. But on the website, I think we do display that on the website. But if you use via the API, I think it's just for enterprise users. Um, do you so guys do go? That? Do you guys yeah. go? Sorry, do you guys go out of your way to create POCs for vulns that? Because, you know, there's there's CVEs that come out without a POC. The vulnerability details are there. Do you guys go out of your way to create POCs for some of these ones? It's, it depends. Sometimes, yes. If it's worth the more. investment? Yeah. If, if it's a hu hugely popular plugin uh, or if it's getting a lot of press, we, we, we might go through the um, the effort. Or if, it's right. a, if the vulnerability details aren't full and we want to verify that it's a real vulnerability, we'll create the puck and then and then add it. During the verification process, we'll create the puck and add it to the database. Interesting. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so what I'll show you now is I'll show you um, how to configure your API token. Uh, okay. Right. So yeah, so anyone watching the chat live now has an enterprise API token. For now. <laughs> <laughs> For until the end of this until the end of this uh, recording, yeah. So so if you're lucky, you can use that. Okay, so I'll show you how to configure the API token. So all the API token does, there's a lot of confusion about this um, from our users, is it just gives you the vulnerability data. The WP scan works absolutely fine. Um, without it, it's just you don't get vulnerability data. Okay. Um, so bef before I show you that, actually, what I'm going to show you is uh, username enumeration. Uh, so that's pretty useful. So. Someone mentioned in on Twitter, like, um, how can we use this for recon? And I think the username enumeration is super useful. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, dash E for enumeration and U for users. And um, so WordPress treats users as if it's public information, uh, usernames as if it's public information, much like uh, Twitter does, for example. Like right. your username on Twitter is, is public, right? But uh, they get a lot of reports. Uh, to WordPress course and it's they find a vulnerability and users can be enumerated when in fact it's uh, it's it's it should be public anyway but it's definitely very useful when you do password brute force attacks uh, so we found some users here admin user uh, Nahamsek, Bob Ryan Kaminsky uh, so they're the different users that we found so it would probably be useful to do a password brute force attack against those users so we dash dash password and then we're going to give the uh, location of our password list. Um, how many users were there? Like five or six? Okay, so we'll go to the top 10. Okay. okay. Uh, and so now it started, uh, well, it will start. Ah, oh, what's wrong with that? Ah, it's passwords. passwords. It's plural, passwords. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Yeah, there we go. Fingers crossed. Okay, yeah, that worked. Um, so now it's going to do a brute force attack against the enumerated um, users. And in this particular instance, it noticed that XML RPC was enabled. So it automatically chose that way to do the password brute force attack because no. it's less likely to be noticed than if you did it against the WP admin page. Uh, in this case, it found uh, two, two user passwords. Uh, Nahamsek uh, password and Ryan QWERTY. Um, we can <clears throat> easily check those if we go to the back to the site. Yeah, and just log in. Yeah, uh, let's have a look. 
the Ryan Quarty, I think, uh, WP oh, login, actually, sorry. Ryan and uh, Quarty. There we go. Yeah, so I did a successful password brute force attack. Um, yeah, so I'll now show you the API token and how we configure that. Um, so you can pass the API token via the uh, via an argument. Okay. Um, so what do we do before we did? Then we did P for um, popular. popular yeah. yep. we, we'll just we'll, we'll just do E, uh, and we won't do any. Uh, well, that'll just do the default um, enumerations, which okay. uh, is uh, default enumerations are these here. So vulnerable plugins. Ah, oh, no, that took ages. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. The HP didn't take that long. Yeah, we'll just we'll, yeah we'll just do that. We'll make that and, the last uh, thing. Yeah. Okay. And then API underscore or is it? No. Yeah. It's dash API dash token. Is it equals or not? No. Just our token. Um. Did you want to do dash p? Oh, sorry. The enumeration. You want to give it an argument just to be. Because if you do dash E, it's going to do a bunch of different arguments, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, if we sh if we're short on time, I, I can I can just do uh, the plugins. Um, let's try out to how what the estimated time for it is, and then we'll go back and change it if anything. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so our API token, our API token, and hopefully that should work. It's okay, so a dash E enumerates just does um, a bunch of different enumerations. Okay. Um, Okay, so what it did there, how it found these so quickly, is it used the cache of the plugins that it already found. Ah, uh, okay. Um, Fair enough. So it didn't, didn't need to enumerate them. So it saves your API token requests. Um, so you don't get, um, you don't use them up. Um, so you can see here the difference with using an API token, you get this output here. Uh, so you don't have to go to the website and um, look for that for yourself. Um, and we can see there's three vulnerabilities that affect this particular plugin, this version of this particular plugin, unauthorized asset manager usage, plugin settings change via CSRF, yeah. authenticated file upload. It's cool that it gives you a CVSS. I mean, for like the bug bounty case, a CVSS would be the, the thing that I would prioritize and kind of go, okay, 9.1 or 6.3 on auth, one, whatever it is, and then kind of prioritizing those. Because um, you want to go for impact with bug bounties, right? And that kind of makes it easier with this. Yeah, I, I, I think though, I think the CVSS is, it depends on your level, your plan level. Um, right, of I, don't, course. I think, I think for the free or, or the basic plans, I don't think it, it gets output. Um, I think it's, I put with it with a higher, with a higher plans. Um, but the rest of it, yeah, would even with a, with a free token, you, you get the rest of it. But I think the CVSS particularly is, is, um, with, with, a, with a paid plan, I think. Um, so here we, we also get the fixed inversion. So what, what, version of the plugin fixed the vulnerability. Uh, photo gallery here, we have a reflected cross-site scripting and another reflected cross-site scripting, bunch of references there. Uh, it's enumerated vulnerable themes. It didn't find any. Uh, there's only 345 of those. And that's going through the, the plugins there. So while, while that goes through all the plugins, we can scan the second machine. Okay. And just to let's have a look. Where were we? So we're gonna fire up the second machine here. Okay, that should be started. Let's just check that. <clears throat> yeah. So it's a different machine on a different local port there. Log out. Um put that in. So on here I there's some database backup files I think I put on there. Um so what are they? So I have to go back to my own user documentation. <laughs> That's all good, this is such a huge um, scanner that it makes sense. There's a lot of uh, lots of different options, so it makes sense. You have to go back to it. I would personally yeah. probably end up like making a ton of different aliases for WP scan, like a WP scan backup, WP scan plugin, WP scan user, just to make my life easier. Yeah, yeah, you could certainly do that. Yeah. Um, so here are the, the different uh, enumerations. So we're going to go for. Uh, database exports here. 
and I believe this machine should have a, um, a database export. So it's where a, a WordPress admin is exported the WordPress database in a in a public uh, web directory, and we're going to okay. try and find. Uh, let's see if that finds it. Okay, so it's doing the enumeration there. We've got 70 different locations. Again, random Robbie uh, donated a few of these to us. Ah, that? none found. Nightmare. It might have been on the first box. Uh, um, we'll, yeah, just go ahead and scan the other one. Uh, let's see if it comes up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's have a look. What was the port number on that? Three? Yeah. I'm just pretty sure it was on the second one. We'll see. But yeah, if, if you're looking to do uh, like local testing like this, uh, the local by flywheel software is super helpful. It takes like seconds to set up a, a WordPress site. Out of curiosity, while we wait for this, Ryan, is there a chance of seeing this and in getting integrated in Burp Suite? The the scanner itself, or, or the vulnerability API data? Both. 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 Yeah. So there was there was a an extension, someone created an extension for Burp Suite um, a number of years ago. Um, but I don't think it's, I don't think they, it's it's working anymore with the latest version. I think it was abandoned as, as right. from what I remember. Yeah, it'd just be cool to see like if it picks up on a WordPress website when it sees it goes w, WP folders to run off, a, you know, when you do the active or passive scan, it will kick off. Uh, yeah. WordPress scan would be very, very cool. I think a lot of pen yeah, testers, but... red teamers and bug bounty hunters would, uh, Get a good use out of it. Yeah, that yeah, definitely be definitely be helpful. Yeah, um, yeah. Feel free to create an extension. Um, that would be useful. Um, so it didn't find the database that exports on that one. So I think maybe we'll find a config backup. Yeah, I think on the second machine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all this user documentation here is not everything is documented but most stuff should be so if you have any if, if there's nothing that's that's not documented on there the, the cli help i put should, should help as well let's check the first um okay yeah, that seems to finish that one okay so yeah this this time it works right uh, so yeah. find a configuration backup um, wp-config.htm um, so if we go check that uh, this is htm file it's rendered by the browser so we'll use source to see it mm -hmm. uh, and here we can see the someone's backed up the configuration file as, as a .htm file we have the um, the auth keys there uh, wow. database password database username um, these are very, very common too. I've, I've heard a lot of folks have been looking for these with different like extensions and it's very, very common even with bug bounties, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, it is It is pretty common, I think, to, for the WP config file to be backed up. Um, in fact, it's probably not as useful as people think it is. Um, unless they have a MySQL database listening publicly. Uh, I don't know, see if you can see that, so see if I can zoom in. I mean, it yeah. could be the, yeah, but also like I've heard or seen people reuse the same password of their root Definitely. database and their you know or not the root database but a database to their user admin or whatever it is yeah. which is it's Definitely, cringy yeah. but mm. I, okay. I i think it's more the confusion with these people think that they they can um create session cookies from from if they have the auth keys um or create cs csrf tokens um but in fact uh, you can't the reason being is um when WordPress creates a session cookie or a CSRF token, it, use, it uses part of the user's hashed password from the database. So unless you have that, you can't create a, a valid session. So, and if you already have the password, then what's the point? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So these are, I mean, they can be useful, but by and large, they're, they're pretty useless. But people do get excited when they, when they see those. Yeah. So if we go back to the first scan here where we did a, a default uh, enumeration scan with an API token. Um, we can see the output. Uh, do, do, do. 
so where were we? So we saw the download manager ones. We saw the photo gallery ones. Uh, okay, that's that's the only ones you find. Um, but yeah, as you can see with the API token, you you get the vulnerabilities, um, and you get this little icon here saying uh, that it spoke to the API, and we did six API requests um, in, in that time. Uh, instead of passing the API token as well via the uh, command line interface, we do have a, a file you can use. Uh, where is it? So you can configure your API token in here, and you don't have to pass it to the command line each time you, you want to use it. Nice. Very cool. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's everything, most things anyway. Um, by Dewey Scan, you can install it as well. We have a Docker image. It's obviously comes pre-installed in Kali Linux, black box, um, and a, a pen two and a few other uh, pen testing distributions. Very cool. Um, so what uh, if we're done with? I'm gonna, the last thing I want to ask you is once you come back, I want to bring you back on and ask you one last question, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. Mostly around. Um, where is WP Scan headed next? Um, but if you're done with sharing the screen, I'm just going to bring you back. Actually, let me, let me switch your screen off to you. Okay. Um, let's pin you to the screen. There we go. Um, so, what is the, what? Anything you can give us as a teaser? Anything that you, you guys have plans coming up in an upcoming release with WP Scan or anything like that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so can, can I uh, stop uh, showing my screen right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll just stop that for now. And I'm just gonna, just for the, the people watching live, I'm gonna regenerate my token. So you, <laughs> that's expired now. <laughs> um, yeah, so what are we doing, WP Scan? Um, I mentioned a couple of times the defaults are gonna change, which is gonna be quite a big change. Okay. Um, in the Quine Islands Phase Tool. Um, that's mainly just to meet people's expectations more. Uh, people, uh, they, they get confused with it with the command line interface, so we're trying to make that simpler. Um, apart from that, we are working, we're doing a lot of work on the database and API right now. Um, okay. We are working to make it um, easier for um, vulnerability researchers or security researchers to submit vulnerabilities to us. Okay. Um, we're also working on rewarding those researchers more often and with better um, prizes. And um, yeah, so we also, I, I don't know if you're aware, but we also have a WordPress plugin, which you can install on a WordPress website and it will link to our API and tell the WordPress admin if any of their plugins are vulnerable. Um, so, and that's kind of our, that's more for WordPress users than pen testers or bug bounty hunters. Um, so we're putting a lot of effort into that as well, um, just so that WordPress users, um, obviously a lot of them are not that technical and they can't use a command line interface. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to make that as easy as possible for WordPress users to um, access our data uh, and, and benefit from that. Um, well, the tool itself, you know, it's been around for like 10 years, well, 16th birthday on June, the, uh, sorry, 10th birthday on June the 16th. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the tool itself is, is really mature. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's basically keeping it um, maintained, making sure it's working with the latest version of Ruby, fixing bugs, yeah, making very small improvements. Um, there's no big or major features we're, we're looking to implement in the WP scan mm -hmm. tool itself uh, right now. Uh, but you know, that, that might change. We get, if you, if you do have a feature request, um, everything's on GitHub. Um, so you can find us on GitHub and you can, and you can drop an issue there and, and request a feature request and we can look into working on that. Very cool. Well, chat, give it up for Ryan, aka Ethical Hacker, um, the brilliant mind behind DVWA. I think everyone in my chat has probably used DVWA and then WP Scan itself as well. Uh, thank you so much, man, for being here and you know giving your Sunday evening to us. Um, chat, give it up. Again, um, if you joined late, this video will go on YouTube in a few weeks. Uh, you can watch it again later on. If you have questions, as Ryan mentioned, reach out to him on Twitter, at Ethical Hacker. I think I have your Twitter uh, in the 
title of the stream. And if you have any future requests, issues, you want to send a PR, uh, I think it's github.com slash team. Uh, check him out on there and send him some future requests. And I look forward to seeing where you guys take WP Scan in the future, man. Awesome. Thank you very much for, for having me on. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Of course. Thanks so much, man. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye. All right. Despite the... Despite the technical difficulties, that was a great interview. I don't understand why my computer does this. If it's not my internet service provider, it's my fucking graphics card. All right, chat, what did you think? Um, more interviews like this? Less interviews like this? What are we doing? Should we do more of these interviews? I think it's great to see um, how others... Um, it's cool to see how others use other people's tools, but it's also cooler when you see the authors and the people that have created these things come on and talk about how they do it. Um, I think that's it for the night for me. I'm going to go and get some food, and i got to get some work done. Um, I'm going to raid a random channel, I think. Uh, let me see who's on here right now really quick if I'm going to raid anybody. Um, Thanks for the stream and a ham sack. Who's that? Agent Steel. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Um, let's. I'm just gonna do a learning Go programming. I think Go is the go-to hacking channel. All right. Um, that's it. I appreciate you guys. I don't know if I'll be streaming tomorrow. I'm probably not going to stream as much on Mondays and Fridays anymore. Um, just gonna take a break for a little bit. I may do some, you know, random. Um, maybe I'm randomly sometimes who knows but for now I really need to take a break from streaming so I'll be Sundays will always be here Saturdays are going to be on uh, once in a while depending on how my weekend goes I want to have some you know time to myself but other than that I will probably come back um, during the week here and there uh, and then I'll go back to my regular streaming schedule at some point all right that's it enjoy the raid when we go in the represent be respectful and enjoy your Sunday evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you're at. Peace.